Yeah, that's that. Next, we have um, uh, Hiroaki Summer, Summer's Blade of the Immortal. Uh, some of these I want to get rid of because I'm kind of OCD about spying continuity. Um, as you can see, some of them are like numbered editions, whereas the older ones don't have the numbers. So I, I don't actually know which volumes these are because I haven't, I've only read volume one. Um, and I don't like how the Dark Horse logo changes at the top. You know, that really kind of pees me off. So the ones that aren't the numbered editions I'll be getting rid of and trade, or maybe trading them in for the numbered editions. So, you know, I'll read that as and when I can. I'm not in a particular rush to read it. Uh, next, what I'm currently reading right now, um, Bloodlad, Volume 1. Um, I think this is actually an omnibus, so I'm not sure. Um, I don't actually remember any individual tanker bonds being released for it, but yeah, I think this is a, either a 2 in 1 or a 3 in 1 edition. But yeah, I started reading it, I'm about 2 or 3 chapters in. Um, you can see my bookmark there, probably about 2 chapters in, and I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, full of a few cliches and that, but it's, it's quite a different story. Um, I'll do. I'll definitely do a review on this. I want to do a review, basically everything that I read, to kind of bump up this channel and um, you know keep anybody interested. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, next, Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, I've read three volumes of it so far. I haven't read four and five, um, but yeah, I've, I've heard good things about this series. I find it to be a bit slow, to be honest. But you know, I'm not going to judge it basically on the first five volumes. It's 27 volumes long, so you know, it has to be pretty good. Uh, next, Naoki Urasawa's Masterpiece, Monster. Um, I haven't started reading this yet because I don't have all of the volumes I want to start reading when I have all of the volumes. I literally only have three more to get. Uh, I've got volume three to get uh, and I've got volume eight and nine to get. I've got all of the, most of the rare ones. Um, uh, anywhere from volume seven and then ten onwards are uh, very easy to pick up. They're very easy to come by. Um, can get them relatively cheap so if you want to get the series then you know definitely start with the cheaper volumes first and then kind of work your way up to get the more expensive volumes but what i do tend what i tend to do is um, buy them from international sellers because if you buy them from um if you you know get them from the uk or wherever it is you're from um they can be a little bit more expensive but uh i found quite a few cheap volumes um on like the canadian amazon site and um i found a cheap volume on the um the us site so yeah um, obviously you'll have to pay international shipping but for the amount that you'll pay if you buy them in England you know you, you're pretty much paying loads for them anyway so you know like if, if you get a volume for like you know nine pound and then it's got like 20 pound international shipping then it's more cost effective to, than to actually buy it um, from the UK you know for prices like 60 80 pounds you know it's more cost effective that way to buy them internationally I'll try used bookstores, but yeah, um, I've heard very good things about this series. Um, a friend of mine watched the anime years ago and told me how brilliant it is, so I'll definitely be, you know, I'll, I'll savour this series and definitely do a review on it as and when I'm finished, you know, how months that'll be. <laughs> uh, next shelf down, um, Ikigami, The Ultimate Limit, Volume 1 to 8. Uh, that's what's been released so far. Um, they don't come out very frequently. Volume 9 is due for release in the autumn, I think around August or something, so... You know, I've got quite a long wait for it, but uh, it's a very, very good series. Very unique uh, by um, Motaro Mase. Uh, one thing I like about this series is um, it's not like an ongoing sort of story. Um, I mean, th there is, you know, flow to the story. You know, it, the, the story does progress, but each chapter, there's like uh, two or three chapters in it, and they're just basically self-contained stories, you know, following the lives of people. Um, I won't tell you too much about it because I want to do a series review on this very soon. Uh, so, yeah. That's that Ikigami Ultimate Limit, pick it up. Next, um, we've got the Kurosage Corpse Delivery Service, um, Volumes 1 to 10, um, by uh, Eji Yotsuka and Husu Yamazaki. Uh, I'm currently on Volume 5, uh, you can see my bookmark there. Um, very, just, I'm so enjoying this series. Um, it's horror, but it's got elements of comedy in it as well, which I really like. It, that's what kind of sets it apart from um, series like uh, MPD Psycho. Um, which I heard, I haven't read it, but I heard it's really, really um, very disturbing. Um, and the Kurosaki Corpse has them elements in it, but it's more light-hearted. Um, it's pretty messed up, but more light-hearted, yeah. So that's that. Some of them are still shrink wrapped because I don't want to open them until I've read them. Shadow, move. Out my way, move. You're my way, I'm trying to do a review. Move. Uh, next, uh, Mail, Volume 3, by Huzui Yamazaki, just him, um, he does the artwork for Kurosagi. Uh, I believe this is the whole series, 
um, just three volumes. Um, one thing I like about it is that it's set in the same universe as the Kurosaki Cops Delivery Service and uh, MPD Psycho. So you see, you tend to find in uh, Kurosaki Cops that you know the characters kind of swap over and kind of you know cross into each other's stories and cross each in, into each other's lives, which is quite interesting. So the male is doesn't have the light heartedness of Kurosaki though. It's more it's darker. Shadow, you're in my way. Move, 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 move. It's darker and. Um, it doesn't deal with dead bodies, it deals with ghosts. Uh, but it's still got that kind of, uh, kind of boxy book design to it. Um, it's really, really creepy. So, so creepy. Um, let's find you an example. I mean, look, just check out the, the artwork. I can't really, I'm not really good at holding these books up, but yeah. I mean, if you saw that, you know, when you woke up, you know, so you can see me, you know, you, well, I'd shit myself, definitely. So yeah, mail uh, volume one to three, which I believe is complete. Next, Ohikoshi by Hiroaki Samura, who does Blade of the Immortal. Um, this is a series of uh, short stories, uh, and a one shot, I believe, in the back of the story. I just finished this recently, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, some parts were quite hard to follow because there's uh, a lot of like Japanese cultural references that kind of like go over my head. Because obviously I'm not Japanese, and I don't really know a great amount about the culture, so. I definitely recommend picking it up though, it's got kind of a glossary in the back that goes more into it, I'll do a review on that. Uh, next, FLCL by Gainax. Um, this is the Omnibus, it collects all uh, three volumes. Um, I've only read half of this because uh, I, I find it quite difficult to follow. Um, if anything, I would recommend watching the anime um, as it's a little bit better. I, I personally think, I mean, the artwork in this is quite far out. You know, it's kind of it's very, very different. Um, so it kind of makes it like, a little bit messy and kind of hard to follow, but and for how random and you know strange it, this story is anyway, you know there's no real sort of coherence to it. But nonetheless, it's something different, something good, I think. Um, next, uh, Seven Billion Needles by uh, Nabuaki Tanano. Um, again, I did a series review on that also, so go and check that out uh, if you want to. Um, we have Parasites by um, Hitoshi Iwaki, um, Red Volumes 1 and 2, uh, I need to get the other ones, um, really, really, really like this series, uh, the artwork is fantastic and I love how it um, manages to mix like uh, battle with like melodrama, you know, like this kid's just in high school but yeah he's having to deal with all these you know, monsters and you know, crazy things that are going on. And, yeah, it's really good. Uh, like with most of the stuff I'm showing you now, I will end up doing a series review on this also. But I haven't finished reading it, so next. Uh, what a Wonderful World by Ine Osano, um, Volume 1 and 2, which um, basically is the whole thing. I think it's a series of short stories, which I haven't started reading yet, because Volume 1 just came in the post a few days ago. Uh, and I'm kind of reading other things right about now, so I will definitely get around to this because I heard I heard it's really good. Um, Bunny Drop by Yumi um, Unita. Um, literally just got this today. Uh, read chapter one online, and it made me, made me want to pick it up. Uh, I'm not. I don't know if this is like a shoujo manga or something. It kind of got that look to it. But um, from what I know, it's a slice of life about uh, some kid's granddad who, uh, some well, kid, I say kid is not a kid, some guy's granddad who has some Ill Ill illegitimate child uh, and he basically takes care of her because all the rest of the family basically shun her and pretend that she doesn't exist, so very, very interesting concept um, and I reckon I'll really enjoy something like that, I like slice of life stuff. Next, um, by Omega by uh, Satomi Nihei, or N Nihei Aka, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. But yeah, uh, I picked this up because I really liked um, the artwork and I was going through somewhat of a, a zombie craze. You know, I was reading a lot of zombie stuff and this really seemed to appeal to me. Absolutely love the artwork, but the story was kind of iffy. Um, I'm kind of the guy who, you know, I, I like my stories with a little bit of character development and this seemed a little bit too dark for me. I'm still going to, you know, collect the series and finish it because it's only six volumes. Um, I'll reread volumes one to three because it's been over a year since I've read these three volumes and I've no idea. Next we have um, uh, volume one and two of the Neon Genesis Evangelion Omnibus Editions. Uh, read volume one already, quite a while ago actually. Um, 
and uh, I've all, I've always known of like this series. Uh, I watched the anime first, as uh, I explained in the previous video. But, yeah, this one comes with gorgeous colour pages um, of I think the original um, um, front cover pages or front book designs from the um, single version volumes. Yeah. I wish he was like pull out posters or something because I'd love something like this on my wall. You know, I'd like to get a big print of uh, something, especially that. You know, either Unit One. I love that. I love the design for it. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll do a series review on that too, most likely. Uh, so yeah, my uh, YouTube channel is going to be getting very clogged and uh, crammed with loads of reviews. But I'm not complaining, and I don't think anybody else is. So. Yeah, that's that. And my final shelf, um, Shinjuku, which is um, a uh, illustrated novel. Um, read the first chapter, and it's it's very good. Um, I just got this a few weeks ago. Um, you'll be able to see it in one of my uh, pickup videos. But yeah, that's that. And that's one thing I love as well. I love hardbacks. Can't get enough of hardbacks. They're just if I see a hardback on the shelf if it's manga and I see a hardback even if I've never read it before or, or you know, or I don't know where it is, I'll pick it up anyway just because it's hardback I'm I'm just like that. Uh next is uh um The Walking Dead. Um I do have volume one but I've uh, lent that one out. Um obviously it's not manga, it's comics. Um but seeing as it's on my shelf anyway, I might as well show you that I've got it. Uh Manga Man. Still haven't read this. It doesn't look very interesting, but because it's hardback, I picked it up. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, um, Human Error Processor, which is uh, 1.5, which um, I think is actually... Um, it's, uh, it says it's like the lost stories that Shira Masamune did before doing the Volume 2 or something, after he did Volume 1 or something like that. But uh, Obviously, I didn't actually order this one. Um, I ordered Volume One, but I'm gonna keep this one anyway because it comes with beautiful color pages. Ah, oh, lovely color pages. A rare treat in uh, manga. There's a few more as well. Yeah, there we go. A few more color pages. And I just love Shiro Masamune's artwork, like Katsuhiro Otomo, but more cyberpunk. Yeah, a nice, beautiful CNN series from the '80s, early '90s, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if you're a fan of manga and anime and you haven't heard of the Ghost in the Shell, then you've probably been living under a rock somewhere, because it's just awesome. I've seen the original film and I'm still to read the manga, obviously, but yeah, I know I'm in for a treat. I know I'm really, really, really going to enjoy that. Uh, next, we have uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of Wind. I've read volumes one and two so far, and I love it, because um, I'm a really big Studio Ghibli fan. And uh, this is the original source material for the film that uh, Hayao Miyazaki um, himself penned and drew um, back way back when. But yeah, it's uh, just the inking. Of, uh, it's got this, uh, like, it's not in black, it's like a kind of deep shade of brown. It kind of gives it, like, this classic feel to it. Uh, I actually wanted to get the um, the, the hardback um, versions. I think they come in, like, two volumes. Um, I would I would prefer them, but... You know they're really hard to come by, so I'm just going to collect the uh, single edition because they're only seven volumes long. I think it's seven volumes, but yeah, oh, I can't get it in with one hand. I'm just going to leave it on top. Uh, next we have uh, Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo. Um, this is uh, one of the first scene and series I saw. Um, the original Akira anime um, I watched when I was about six years old, and uh, I actually never, I didn't understand where it was. It was on uh, once late at night. And uh, I just assumed, like, you know, me and my six-year-old self just assumed, oh, a cartoon, this late night, this is strange. And um, yeah, I never forgot it, just that scene where Tetsu was hallucinating and all this guts spill out, you know, just stayed with me. So years later, I picked up the manga, and um, it's uh, not in its original it's the original presentation, it's, it's flopped to, you know, accommodate English readers, but it doesn't really seem to take away from anything. It didn't really uh, affect the artwork in any way. Um, but yeah, this is an absolutely epic manga. I'm, I'm not saying epic like you know, epic as in you know the the popular use of the word. I'm I'm talking epic in the true sense of the word. It's just on on all scale. It's just it's absolutely 
amazing. It's amazing that you know one guy thought of all this. He probably had a shitload of assistance. Um, I don't know, but yeah, just if you haven't read Akira, um, the the manga goes so much deeper into um, what it covered in the film because the film's relatively short. I mean, you got like a telephone book size, you know, volume, and there's six of them, so you can only begin to imagine how deep it goes into a, into the story. I mean, there's minor characters in the film, like uh, like this woman here. I think in the film, um, she's actually a guy. Uh, but yeah, um, you see like a few seconds of her, but in the manga she's a major player, she's a major character in the story. Um, obviously we know Canada, um, K, uh, number s uh, 6 I believe he's called, I can't remember his name, Takashi, that's his name, Tetsuo. Um, and uh, he's uh, he works for the Resistance, I think he's like one of the leaders of the Resistance, but you don't really see him in the film either. Uh, but yeah, pick up the manga, it's amazing. Um, next we have Battle Royale, uh, the Ultimate Editions, hardbacks. Uh, I just love the presentation of these Tokyo Pops. Um, this is one of the first CNN series I read. I think this was the first CNN series I read. Actually, I collected these uh, a few years ago now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the artwork is just it's on a whole new level. I mean, look at that. Oh, this guy's such a bastard. But yeah, such an amazing series. and. One thing, one of my biggest gripe about uh, these editions is that uh, I will never ever come across Volume 5 for a reasonable price because Tokyo Pop, I think, believe went bust, the um, the Europe branch I believe went bust, and there's only a few thousand copies of the Ultimate Editions that exist, and uh, the cheapest I can see Volume 5 for is £140, whereas the retailed are about £15 or something like that, because that's how much I bought these for, I, I bought these when they first came out. And I wish I'd have got the whole series, you know. Um, as and whether I, I remember seeing Volume 5 on the shop, I think to myself, ah, oh, you know, I'll pick it up another time, you know. But, well, I'm just going to have to keep looking around for it. And finally, on my shelf, Elephant Man by Richard Starkins. Again, not a manga, just one of my very few comics. Um, it's really good, actually. Um, the artworks, I mean, because it's, it's loads of different artwork, um, artists that work on this, so... Um, you know, the, the art style is constantly changing from chapter to chapter. Um, I don't know if I'll do a series review on this, I'm not sure. Because I have to reread uh, volumes 1 to 3, because I haven't read zero, 0, That was like more of a... that came out after volume 1, so it's not like essential to the story. But yeah, it's a good series. Um, so yeah, that's it for my uh, collection so far. Um, I'm not going to do these collection videos very frequently. Um, you know, I'll probably do another one. Um, you know, maybe when I've like doubled what I own now, because you know, it'd be kind of tedious, you know, doing a collection video every week. You know, when I've only got like you know ten or twenty more volumes from you know what from the previous week, so yeah, you know, probably end up doing one of these in like a year's time or something. But yeah, that's basically what I have for now. That's my other shelf, my other shelf over there. So yeah, I think it's about three hundred and fifty volumes or so um, so far. So pretty proud of it because I've been collecting now for about. Um, two or three years, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. See you later.